for uh, mysticism and theology and Evelyn Underhill. Thus, even the rigid monotheism of Israel and Islam cannot, in the hands of the Kabbalist and the Sufis, get away from an essential dualism in the mystical experience. According to the Zohar, God is considered an eminent, I'm imminent, is imminent in all that has been created or emanated, yet in, is transcendental to all. So, to the Sufis, God, they say, is to be contemplated, A, outwardly, in the imperfect beauties of the earth, B, inwardly, by meditation. So you can contemplate outwardly, and then you can do meditation. Further, since he is one, and in all things, to conceive oneself as separate from God is an error. Yet only when one sees oneself as separate from God can one reach out to good. Thus Delacroix, speaking purely as a psychologist, and denying to the mystical revelation, which he attributes exclusively to the normal content of the subliminal mind, any transcendental value writes with entire approval of Saint Teresa that she set up externally to herself the definite God of the Bible at the same time as she set up within her soul, the confused God of the pseudo Arepagite, the one of Neopolitanism, the first is a guarantee of the orthodoxy of the second, and prevents her from losing herself in an indistinction which is non-Christian. The confused God within is highly dangerous. St. Teresa knew how to avoid this peril and served by her rich subconscious life by the exaltation of her mental images by her faculty of subdivision on the one hand and on the other by her rare powers of unification. She Realize simultaneously a double state in which the two gods, two ways of apprehending God, transcendence and immanence were guarantees of each other, mutually consolidating and enriching one another, such is the intellectual vision of the Trinity in the seventh habitation. <clears throat> it is probable that Saint Teresa, confronted by this astonishing analysis, would have objected that her Trinity, unlike that of her eulogist consisted of three and not two persons her his language concerning confused interior and orthodox exterior gods would certainly have appeared to her delicate and honest mind both clumsy and untrue nor could she have allowed that the unconditioned one of the neoplatonists was an adequate description of the distinctly personal divine 
Majesty, whom she found enthroned in the inmost sanctuary of the castle of the soul. What St. Teresa really did was to actualize her own experience, apprehend in the ground of her soul by means of her extraordinarily developed transcendental perceptions, the three distinct and personal aspects of the Godhead, which are acknowledged by Christian religion. First, the Father, pure transcendent being, creative source and origin of all that is, the unconditioned and unknown and one of the Neoplatonist, who is neither this nor that and must be conceived, Pacey, Madame de la Lacroix, as utterly transcendent to the subject rather than set up within the soul. Secondly, in the person of uh, Christ, St. Teresa isolated and distinguished the Logos, or creative word, the expression or outbirth of the Father's thought. Here is the point at which the divine substance first becomes apprehensible by the spirit of man, that mediating principle raised up between heaven and earth, which is at once the mirror of pure being and the light of a finite world. The second person of the Christian Trinity is for the believer not only the brightness or express image of deity, but also the personal and exhaustible responsive fount of all life and object of all love. When because of his taking up in the incarnation of humanity into the Godhead has become the bridge, um, the bridge between finite and infinite, between the individual and the absolute life, and hence in mystical language the true bridegroom every human man soul thirdly she recognized within herself the germ of the absolute life the indwelling spirit which is the source of all man's transcendental consciousness and his link with the being of god that is to say the holy spirit of the divine love the real desire is seeking for the real desired without whose presence any knowledge of or communion with God on man on every human goodness on man's man's part would be inconceivable. In the supreme vision of the Trinity, which was vouchsafed to St. Teresa, and the seventh habitation of the soul, these three aspects became fused in one in the deepest recesses of her spirit in the abyss where selfhood ceases to have meaning, and the individual soul touches the life of the all. Distinction vanished, and she saw God in a point such an experience, such an intuition of simple and undifferentiated Godhead, the unity beyond those three centers of divine consciousness, which we call a trinity of persons, is highly characteristic of mysticism. The German mystics, temperamentally miles asunder from St. Teresa, described it as the attainment of the still wilderness or lonely desert of deity. 
the limitless divine peace, impersonal and indescribable, <laughs> forever hid in the cloud of unknowing, and yet the true country of the soul. These statements, um, statements which appear when thus laid down to be hopelessly academic, violently divorced from life, were not for St. Teresa or any other Christian mystic abstract propositions, but attempts towards the description of first-hand experience. Hmm. By some mysterious manifestation of the truth, she says, the three persons of the most blessed trinity reveal them selves preceded by illumination that shines on the spirit like a most dazzling cloud of light. The three persons are distinct from one another. A sublime knowledge is infused into the soul, imbuing it with the certainty of the truth that the uh, three are of one substance, power, and knowledge, and are one God. Thus, that which we hold as a doctrine of faith, the soul now, so to speak, understands by sight, through it beholds the blessed trinity, neither by the eyes of the body, nor of the soul. This being no imaginary vision, all the three persons here communicate themselves to the soul, speak to it, and make it understand the words of our Lord in the Gospel, that he and the Father and the Holy Ghost will continue and make that abode with the soul which loves him and keeps his commandments. <laughs> We're stopping there on page uh, 54. Reading from Mysticism. In the myst chapter 5, Mysticism and Unta Theology. Hmm. 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 